Hey, welcome to Dirty Little Creators, a podcast of all things creativity. With me, Andy, this is Rich, and this week, week five. Five. We didn't do one last week. No. <coughs> Some little fishing. And uh, <laughs> we're here this week with the inimitable... Tom Newell. Is that ad- adjective? Tom Newell. Thanks for coming. On this, uh, yeah, cheers for having me. Soggy Sunday evening. Yeah, braved it through the rain, but I only lived down the road. So. <laughs> Everyone lives all, in the, all the guests in the road. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's the best way. Hips the bill. <laughs> I've heard Bolsover is going to be the new Nether Edge. That's what people are saying. He keeps saying this, but he's trying to push Bowls over because he's buying a house there. Oh, okay. Trying, trying to get there. How you have to there. pronounce it, Bowser, then, don't you? Yeah. Do you? Oh, you know that oh, end of town, don't you? Yeah, I'm from Bozer. Chesterfield. So. Yeah. Okay. I don't know other, why, other but people from mom. Bolsover call it Bozer. 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 <laughs> Probably because... As in... They're like, inbred and... Is that the character? <laughs> inbred <laughs> minus. Mario. Oh, yeah. Bowser. Bowser. <laughs> Bowser <laughs> Cas- Castle. His, yeah. his full name's Bolsover. <laughs> Somebody tried to once tell me that Bowser Castle Is that his was... Castle? Was Maybe. the castle... Oh, it right, was okay. based on Bolsover yeah. Castle. <laughs> The one that's in Mario, but I don't think it is. I just think it's some the people in Nintendo. You don't think the Japanese developers of location <laughs> scout now? Yeah. Just a bit <laughs> went out to Bowser. <laughs> what have you, how have you pronounce it? Yeah. What do you think of Bowser being low? I don't know if I've ever been there. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> but um, the beast of Bowser has gone now, hasn't he? Yeah, has he done? Kicked now? out. No, he just got voted out. Oh. What's he gone Tory? I yeah. don't know anything about anything. What are you talking not about? Not as it. Uh, what's his name? The uh, Labour politician. Who um, was... Oh, fucking hell. I was on about him earlier with my dad. What's his name? I have no idea. Best Labour politician ever, Tony Benn. Oh, right. Didn't he die? No, Did, not Tony Not Ben. Ben. What's his name? <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Beast of Balls over is his nickname, but I forgot his name. Oh, oh fuck's I'll sake. put it on the screen. <laughs> but he's, I'm going um, to Google it. And my mind's blank. That's what happens when you get strangled. So it, 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 it's now a Tory yeah. thing. Yeah, well, that affects you. Dennis right? Skinner. Fuck's sake. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. All right. You think all those mining towns are just going to be Labour forever, aren't you? No. They've all... Not on the last one. That's where it all changed, didn't it? Because everyone likes wearing face masks and authoritarian states now. <laughs> Just the 2020s, Let's talk about baby. That. Let's talk about creativity. <laughs> depressing. It is really depressing. How's your it's lockdown depressing. been? Have you found it's helped your creativity at all, or has nothing really um, changed? In a way, yeah. I've sort of knuckled down and found different ways of working. Well, it's similar ways of working because the working from home thing is what I've always done anyway. Yeah. So you don't have a studio, you do. No, I've worked from home since. Leaving uni, like right. uni- university was the last uh, studio I had properly. And then living in London, the studio was the kitchen table, and then coming back up here. Oh, yeah, I forgot you lived in London for ages, didn't you? Yeah, so yeah. where did you get to uni? Um, with Rich, like year above Rich. In, oh, uh, yeah. Salter Lane, Sheffield Hallam. Yeah, he was the year above me. Like the inspiring year. I forget you went to Hallam. You went, didn't go to Hallam, did you? Yeah. We have this conversation every fucking week. <laughs> Regular <laughs> listeners. Well, you didn't well, do fine art, did you? <laughs> yeah, I did. That's so funny. Yeah. Yeah, so we both did fine art. It's quite a... We've been saying like on the previous episodes that there was quite a bit of a peak of like creativity in Sheffield at that. But I don't know if it's because we were all graduating and really into it. But mm. There was a nice buzz around Some Sheffield. Yeah. At that time. Lots of galleries and lots of bits and people doing stuff and yeah, yeah, it was. Is it just that we then um, come out of touch with it or uh, yeah? Do you think it's happening? Where it's happening? Yeah, I mean, I I did find myself in a bubble of um, that kind of mindset that you had when you were on the course and thinking uh, conceptual thoughts and stuff, which, which you kind of went off the ball with as soon as you left. Because I tried to keep working in that way, with because we it, it was super conceptual stuff, and 
like I went in as a painter, but they were like, you can't. Yeah, we're not, same. <laughs> we're not going to let you paint. I mean, not, not Why so would you words, paint? But, yeah. yeah. Um, so I ended up being a, like a video artist and sound artist, which I ended up enjoying. I mean, once I knew what the kind of hoops that they wanted you to jump through, I was... Um, to get good marks? Yeah. I was kind of happy to go along with it, but then... Uh, not long after leaving the course, I just kind of went back to drawing and painting. I remember having that conversation with you. You said you, you just leave and then you go back to what you were doing before you started uni. <laughs> yeah. But you go back with like a bit of a different outlook on things and a bit more proactive. And yeah. You might finish things a bit better. Did I guess think- it has given me a slight edge over... Because now I'm doing mostly like illustration stuff. But I guess people that have studied illustration might approach something different to um, someone right. who's studied making sound art and yeah. having um, having to have like a super tight concept for stuff, whereas um, illustration is its own concept, I guess. You're just illustrating a fixed thing and you don't have to uh, argue why you're doing it and stuff. Right, yeah. That was, the, that was the side of the, the media studies photography I did at A-level. That's the side of it I could never, ever do. I was mm. always terrible at it. I'd take the best photos in the class and then I'd get the, the worst marks why. for the... I'm like, it looks nice. Yeah. It looks good. You, we can agree yeah. that it, it should, looks really good. It should be. Like, why? Like, but they're not <laughs> even like why. They're kind of like, you got to kind of bullshit it. Mm. Like... Just reference some people, and I yeah. could never get my head around it. So I was always terrible at it. I, I like can never do things. that bit. I do like sketchbooks after my finished piece to try and just think everyone did exactly what, yeah. what I've done. Work my, backwards. And my my invent friend, what's your the first own. picture? The thing that you've done. <laughs> done it. <laughs> my mate Adam Smith could do great photos and then just blast out the all of the what, what was he called? The the text. He could just blast it out. Like, oh, done. Mm. Like brilliant, exactly what the teacher wanted. Bump. Like he figured out like what they wanted, the, the marking scheme and stuff, and he could just bang it out. And I, I just never get my head around it. Weird. Just you get like A stars and all of that stuff, and I just can never get my head around. It. The other thing that working, I, show you working. I'm sorry, like, I, can't, I can't. The other thing, bit of a tangent that I really enjoyed about the time at Salt Lane was your band bit, the Caroline Show band. Oh yeah, Fucking yeah, amazing. Oh yeah, so they used I met... to sing and play. What was it called? The Cajon. Spanish box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking amazing. <laughs> so some, so, yeah, some really good gigs. Yeah, Remember I mean that's something that wouldn't have happened if I wasn't at art school. So yeah, I could, uh, formed a band with some people on the course and stuff. And yeah, that's what you meant to do at art school, isn't it? They yeah. were fucking really good. Um, but we started that. They know of... Suzuki. Yeah, we singing. played with him. <laughs> have you heard of the band Can? He was a singer with Can for a while. You uh, would have heard some of that song. He's a Japanese dude who yeah. was in a German um, sure, sure, progressive. Sure. Sounds very fine art. <laughs> but, yeah. And they played a gig opposite where Kelvin Flats used to be, of all places. It was a uh, fundraiser for Rare and Racy. Ah. And he turned up and asked if he could play with us, and he got up on stage and sang a couple yeah. of songs with us. I feel like this podcast is going to be a lot of Googling involved. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> get the full experience <laughs> yeah now Cam's quite a big band I don't think he was sing, singing with them for long though was he uh, there was him and then another singer uh, Malcolm Mooney yeah um, but I, I ended up doing my uh, end piece on uh, about him Dama Suzuki oh, so okay. I played with him a few times and used like footage and then uh, projected it and got people to play with the projection of him and stuff okay I don't. Um, I can't remember it. It's probably high. But yeah, I just, I just <laughs> wanted to draw, but I ended up doing that. <laughs> yeah. So you were you were doing like you, you were always into drawing, like your whole life, or up to yeah. Well, I, I carried on drawing right through the court, the, the fine art course, but I was just doing it on the side, and it was not thought of as the art practice, right? Because um, I was making gig posters for our band and other bands that we played with and stuff, and. CD covers and stuff like that, but it was always just completely separate to fine art. Right. Um, 
And then that helped when I kind of left the course and couldn't really uh, continue to work in conceptual way outside that bubble. I kind of struggled with it. Uh, did some um, like applying for funding, which didn't get, and no. just kind of got disheartened with it all, and just fell back more onto making gig posters. Do you? We talked about this with Nick the other week. Do you feel that like the product and the actual having to make something that's got a value and to sell and things like that is kind of more important to why you'd ha- have to actually do it than just making something for the sake of making it. Because I always found that really weird that like don't have a product in mind, don't have like a yeah like a piece at the end of it that's kind of like something that you, like I'd always have no I want to sell this yeah and I want to be able to eat with what I'm selling <laughs> or it's got a purpose. Do you know what I mean? Like a gig yeah. poster or a CD cover or it's got a I can't I, making something without any purpose always just seemed yeah. really hard to me but that's what they were like forcing down the throat at you yeah because that whole scene at the high end of like conceptual art basically and relies it, completely on funding doesn't it yeah, um, yeah. it was nothing to do with I mean, being good or having a craft it was just to do be good at filling in forms yeah. and getting like 20 grand to live for next year oh, right. or winning turn yeah. prize and getting 20 grand and I suppose a very small percentage of those artists will sell a piece, but it'll be like, I don't know how you buy a piece like that. Yeah. Because <laughs> people buy performance pieces and stuff, don't they? Do they? But I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Does that banana on the wall Just get people living in the house. And... The banana on the wall? Because I, I, I just read recently that it got sold. To a, a mute, to, to I'm a not museum. sure who did that recently, but I know that Mauricio Catalan did it ages ago. Oh, right. Yeah, because the recent sure. one was Banana on all the gaffer tape. That got yeah. sold, sold for £150,000 to a museum, but obviously it, it's just gaffer tape on a wall, so they just took the gaffer tape on the wall over to the museum in the US. Did they something like that? Have to replace the banana? Like yeah, each did they? Well, that's what they did. They replaced the banana. Wait, it if someone it buys it, it. they just someone bring a new banana each day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's <laughs> just a bit a like the Damien Hirst piece, isn't it? The spot painting. Somebody bought one for like an office wall in their like foyer, but basically he just sent them a pot of paints with a compass <laughs> and the the instructions of how to paint the circles on the wall and how far they should be and a certificate of authenticity and you went, <laughs> do it yourself. <laughs> So it's basically the same kind of thing, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. It's just fucking weird. Yeah. So but I did enjoy the memes that came from the banana, anyway. <laughs> it's <laughs> all about it was... memes. Do you think memes will become <laughs> art at some point? Or are they already? Um, yeah, that'd be a good show, actually. Just memes. <laughs> what was the one who did a show with Instagram not so long back? Just showing somebody's profiles. Was it Richard Prince or something? I'm not sure. I'm sure he did something. Yeah, I'm not I'll have to look that up. I remember getting really like into a wormhole of like memes and internet culture. Cause I I I still remember remember before computers, just about. And then um I think when I was about fifteen we got a home computer and the internet. And then since then, culture is just like just like gone straight up if there's a graph it's just like this crazy internet culture mm. I don't feel like anyone's got their head around it yet in terms of any kind of real good theory or study like it's because it's moving so fast and changing because I remember watching it like, if, did you ever go on some, something awful uh, forums so like something awful forums like spawned off a lot of what goes on now in terms of exploitable images and like memes it all like burst there it's like pre-reddit okay and a lot of like like a lot of the the big comedy writers and people that are like really at the top of everything now came from those forums and I was in I, I used to go on them all the time like back when it was really because um, I missed the whole reddit thing I know it was happening but I never really like but I just remember getting really interested in it and being like this is like such a crazy thing that's happening 
and whenever I like think start thinking about memes and like I get really like ooh it's like this huge universe of just weird stuff like anthropomorph not anthropomorph what's the study of uh, human like babies in nature Anth- anthropology, anthropology wise yeah. Like there's so much interesting stuff going on there, and now it's like accelerating, 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 and completely changing the world. Like in terms of the dictatorships and like the, the elections, and it's mm, like yeah. it's gone from in 30 years, it's gone from just like networking, university libraries and archives and stuff, to just like taking over the world. Like it's so bizarre. It's only just reaching a point where we can step back a little bit and take a grasp of what's been happening with it really isn't it because it's been happening so quick so and fast like academics there's no way to, to gauge what's been going on how it's changing us and it was only just gaining momentum when we were at uni really. yeah like people yeah. would go into that computer room and check their emails once a week and stuff. Yeah, you didn't. I think I, I think yeah. My mum bought me a laptop when I started uni. As a you've started, you've started uni, and it was like by the time I'd left uni, it was just shit. It was, it was like yeah, <laughs> it, got, oh, it don't even load up anymore. Um, but I can remember like first email addresses and things like that back then. Because mm. I've still got it. It's quite funny. Cause it, <laughs> what's it? What's the Address? Big dicks at hotmail.com. <laughs> <laughs> so I, so I, just loved t- I had to tell somebody not so long back for. Um, you could sell that for a lot of money, probably. For uh, <laughs> a PayPal payment. And then, oh, just those email? two words, like proper spelling of it. It's like D I K Z. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like. Classic hotmail. <laughs> putting it on like. Em- employment things when I first left you now I want a job what's your email big dicks there you go I love that it's not like I've got a big dick it's not like big dick no it's dicks <laughs> it's like oh, I, it's right. always like I want big dicks sent to this email address yeah so the one that did <laughs> pre-dick pic <laughs> the one that I just did a job oh is it because your name's Rich yeah oh right so I did that job but for, still it's for it's the it's <laughs> Not so long back, and he wanted to send me like eight grand or something for the deposit for this job, and um, apparently he was sat there in the meeting with the guy who I know got the job, and he's just like, "I'm not sending eight thousand pounds to big dicks at Hotmail." So <laughs> <laughs> the like, Guardian get hold of this, yeah, yeah. especially KZ. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe if it was CKS, it's like. <laughs> Suspected, not that there's anything wrong with being homosexual, but he's like suspected homosexual, Asian, and a Taurus who's just like, I can't do this. So he ended up sending it to my personal account. But yeah, just funny. Mine was hat 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 at lycos.co.uk. Lycos? That's a blast from the I past. don't remember the uh, password. I don't know if Lycos is still a thing. No, I don't think. Yeah. I remember MySpace was massive at the time, though, wasn't it? Yeah, because that's how we started the band. Just off the back of MySpace and HTML. Yeah. You were like some kind of hacker (laughs) because you put a different background on your MySpace page. Yeah. Yeah, It was really good. Everyone's MySpace page, like, opened up with flashing lights and music and stuff and crashed your computer and it opened. (laughs) (laughs) So whereabouts was your studio in Salt Lane? Uh, we were B block. We got to B block in the second year and just stayed there. Second uh, okay. and third year near the stores. Yes, the one that said we're living in the RoboCop future on the wall. Oh, I can't remember that. Yeah, maybe. Can you not remember that? <laughs> it was a good I, space I, though. I <laughs> thought Owen Adams painted that on the wall, but he said it wasn't yeah. him. And I was like, <laughs> who was it? Because we maybe are actually living us. in the RoboCop future now. Yeah. Yeah, I spoke to it. Uh, but you got the, you had the actual last year in that building, didn't you? Yeah. Where, where yeah. they said you could literally do whatever knock you want. down the walls and yeah. <laughs> the the piece I made was in the basement and that stayed there because I know um, Dan Sumption went in and took some photos like probably a year after it shut <laughs> and was, my thing was still stood up in there. Mm. Strange. And my, I, I nicked a big, um, you know, the advertising ends of bus shelters. Yeah. I, I acquired one of those <laughs> and I wired it up with some lights in it and stuff. And 
I used it for a sign as part of my piece and um, somebody I know who does reclaim stuff ended up taking it and selling it to somebody and this girl in Penniston's got it as a headboard on it. <laughs> I was just like, wow, that's pretty cool. Massive light up headboard. And yeah, uh, so you, you carried on doing illustration and then you you know worked normal jobs I guess and then carried carried on the illustration on the side and then slowly built it up. Yeah. Well I moved to I graduated in two thousand and six. Uh did band stuff and illustration oh, stuff. I don't know when I was it. I feel like I was there then. I don't know. I don't know the Me, years. You were. It's so weird. Kind yeah, because then you went to London. Time. I remember having a few trips to London. And I went to London two thousand eight or nine. Um, did you meet Helen in London, or did you already know Helen? No, we met here. Uh, Helen got a job down there, and I kind of followed her down there. Um, but uh, yeah, because I was doing freelance illustration but when I was down there I um, took on like a, a weekend job at an art shop in Shoreditch so that was kind of good to develop um, like test out materials different pens and uh, meet people Still through Posca's yeah. <laughs> Did you? I said see? Posca. If anybody wants to send Tom some Poscas, I'm sure he'll be happy. Oh, I guess I guess send Poscas already. <laughs> That's another Google for me. I need some more actually. It's like but... the tenth Google this episode. <laughs> what do you not know what a Posca is? Nope. Paint pens. It's like a, you know the ones that you have to press them. Okay. And more paint comes out. Okay. Yeah, I've had a sponsorship for a while because I was. Your foot. Sorry. No, it's all right. no, I was just <laughs> it for a bit. I, I hope that's not. Too I was much. doing lots of like live painting. Um, I never understand why people want to watch people live paint, like watching paint dry. But it was a popular thing. It was in pubs, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, actual live. All oh, right. So I'm thinking Twitch yeah. TV. No, just like people okay. setting up like oh. three or four boards and. Mm. But I would always use Posca there, and um, people would always ask what the pens were and. They would say, oh, I'm going to go out and get some tomorrow. And right. kind of got in touch with the company in the end and said, look, I'm, I'm literally selling your product to you. So, so, really. <laughs> so uh, yeah, this, they've been sending me pens for a while. Did you know Joe Peel then? Because she was in Shoreditch. Uh, was, she, was she in Shoreditch? Yeah. She was in London at the same time. Yeah, I met her a few times in London. And then she moved back similar time to me. So We all moved back. It's so all <laughs> intertwined. We all moved back. Did Nick say he lived in London as well? He did, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah, Nick was in London. My, my, I just texted my friend, um, who we're probably going to have, have on in a couple of weeks, mm-hmm. and he's just moving from Devon back to London. I'm like, well, wow. what's going on? That's a back step. Well, yeah. he only moved to Devon for the lockdown, like in March. Uh, okay. But like, he's just it like, I don't, I don't know why I'm doing this, but I've got to move back to... Seems to be a bit of an exodus of uh, London, especially oh, lockdown. Because if, because he can't play, he's a musician. He can't play live, really. Mm. So I'm like, what? Whatever. I'll ask him it's when he comes to the podcast. Cafe bloody barista, <laughs> isn't he? Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> what else do you do? Just play on Fargate. <laughs> yeah. Been down Fargate lately. Yeah, I went there today. Fucking most depressing it's, fucking it's road wild. in the country, I'd say. It's uh, it's dark. Yeah. Oh. It's empty now, isn't it? All the big stores, like from when you were a kid, and you'd be like, "Oh, that was," and you're just like, "Empty, empty," or it's like for rent, but there's somebody in there just selling shit. I wonder <laughs> how much? Yeah, I wonder what the rent's like there. At what point do we start gentrifying it? I don't think you can gentrify a high street though, when there's like rents of fifty, sixty grand a year. Will it be though now? Yeah. Easily. You might get a free rent period, but you'd still try and hammer you. They're all owned by big banks, aren't they? Deutsche Bank and... Oh, the properties. Oh, yeah. They don't give a shit. Because they developed the other end of town, haven't they? More, the more. Yeah. It's like drained. Drained Fargate. It's dark. It is dark. There's a lot of homeless <laughs> people there. When did you move to Sheffield then from Ches? Or have you always... Um, for you, Nick? Uh, well, I left Chesterfield to start uni in Leicester. I did one year at uni oh, okay. in Leicester. Um, and then dropped out and then moved to Amsterdam. 
for six months. Sure. Okay. <laughs> cool. uh, well, it wasn't even Amsterdam. It was in the middle of nowhere, just in the Netherlands, um, working in a factory. <laughs> Doing what? <laughs> Making plastic bags. <laughs> what? <laughs> it was Leicester that bad? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I didn't, didn't like Leicester, but I met this guy... Uh, and we both, I can't, forgot, we were working for like per temps um, agency doing factory work in Leicester. And then we saw an advert somewhere for like, oh, we saw it online. It was like just as we were starting to use the internet for bits and bobs. And it was like a, a British company that said, come to uh, Holland, get, um, they put you up in like a little chalet thing in a, <laughs> like a static caravan thing and they, they give you um, scooters to get to work on and then you're just doing like shift work in a factory <laughs> Why? with with old Dutch guys who don't speak any English <laughs> making plastic bag yeah but it was just so like weird. something to do and it was just yeah. a complete life package of like yeah yeah we'll do that <laughs> it doesn't sound like much of a life to be honest but no it was a weird life a Dutch it, dream it was good to do it for a while I've just got <laughs> speaking what? of Dutch thing I've got this fancy and I want to meet a Dutch person and just go do all your ovens smell of farts <laughs> <laughs> don't know why that joke <laughs> hit the counter he's ready to be a dad uh, so you were in Latin, so you went to De Montfort yeah yeah which yeah. campus were you at Oh, it's so long ago. Was it in the centre or was it like out? Um, sort of centre, I don't oh. know. Did you go to like uh, I lived to Charlotte? Or, uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, do you know Leicester? I grew up there. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> yeah, from Leicester. Yeah. Well. yeah, that's where I'm from. I came up here when I was 17, 18. So I, I, lived, I lived a bit... Um, Narber Road, and then oh. I lived across the road from the prison for, All right, for yeah. most Welford of the time I was there. Yeah, Welford yeah. Road, yeah. That's the prison. <laughs> um, but the Charlotte was good. I saw a yeah, few good gigs there. Yeah, it's now, I think. Yeah. I love um, the Charlotte. The Charlotte oh, no, was, no, was pretty good. Yeah. The underground. The, there's a, yeah, so there's the, the fan club, and then there was Mosh. Oh, it didn't used to be called Mosh, it was called something else. But they were like the indie clubs that we went to every weekend. Yeah. The Charlotte was like the place to play. It was like the, like every sort of decent, like Radiohead played there. Like it's a really small place. And uh, it was really depressing when it was when sure. Mm-hmm. I won a battle of the bands there once. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite a good musician. And really good, yeah. So <laughs> they, they have a battle of the bands that's like the thing to do in Leicester. That all the bands and uh, it was a particularly weak year because there was three three bands in the final and I was in, I was playing bass in two of them <laughs> well, my, my chances are pretty good at winning this day. <laughs> the music scene in Leicester was <laughs> not great <laughs> one bass player <laughs> one bass I played in like four bands <laughs> was there a uh, friction of maybe they yeah. thought you were playing better for one of the bands yeah, yeah 100% <laughs> so Alex Kid, the prog rock band uh, post rock band the, the very sensitive oh Alex was, Kip yeah I've heard yeah. of that band so the singer was very very uh, happy to listen to this very sensitive chap so he'd get really knocked because I'd be playing in the other band <laughs> the other band won like what a was grand, the other band called oh, a grand Red Cars Go Faster oh okay and then, I've uh, heard of both those bands yeah you would have if, if you were in Leicester yeah. Time, yeah. <laughs> yeah Alex Kid's a pretty good name for a band Ooh. Yeah, there's a DJ called Alex Kidd who's like quite famous. The, in, the <laughs> inbuilt out. game when you... <laughs> yeah, it was the yeah. game. On the... <laughs> yeah, it was the game. Sega, wasn't it? Yeah. So funny how lives have like crossed a little bit. Yeah. In Shoreditch. I um, was in... Uh... Leicester. It was... Yeah, there's good things about it, but uh, the course... The course was more fine art. Like, they they didn't mind if you were painting, but they didn't really care what you did. You, like, you didn't see the tutors very much. Um, what a surprise <laughs> <laughs> so it's really weird because I think uh, when Sheffield was uh, Hallam was more hands on like that you did get a lot of feedback from yeah. people if you wanted it yeah if you didn't want it and you just wanted to <laughs> fade into the background nobody chased you or no no one was making you come to uni were they no but by the time I got there I actually knew that that's where I wanted to be yeah because me and you oh, were both just, yeah. kind of Immature, mature students by that point, weren't we? So, yeah, 
But I could never get my head around that. Because it was really weird because I was only like, I think it was 26, 25, 26. And everyone's calling me like Papa Rich. That I'm really <laughs> yeah, old and stuff like that. And you're like, yeah. I'm not even that old. <laughs> but there's like, people yeah. on my course that were so focused and knew exactly what they wanted to do. And they were straight out of college. Yeah. And I weird couldn't ass. get my head around how yeah. but I, I was not ready to yeah. do that. No. I'd had all the shit jobs and stuff. Yeah. That we talked about it in the first first one with me and you. Like measuring bricks and fucking all sorts of crap <laughs> jobs. Just Yeah. I need to do something better with my life. Well, that's how Didn't I actually... Why not? I was just about them. <laughs> <laughs> that's how I found out about the course at um, Hallam. Was I, I was labouring in Sheffield. Right. And um, the wife of the guy who was buying up student houses and stuff, she'd been um, to Salter Lane in, like, 70s and stuff, and she's right. like, oh, it's a really good art course. Um, you should go check it out and... Because I'd never thought about going to uni in Sheffield because it seemed like it was too close to yeah, Chesterfield, yeah. really. I was just super lazy. It's just the only one I applied for. Mm. It's like, I just want to stay in Sheffield. Yeah. I'd never I'd nice thought that it would be good, time. but then there was like a... It did have a reputation of being a good course. Well, when we... Gra- the year I graduated, it was like the third best art course in the country or something. Yeah. And then when it moved to... Sheffield town centre, city centre. Um, it was actually voted the worst run course of all courses in the country. <laughs> <laughs> it just went to shit. Yeah. Well, I think they struggled with the move, didn't they? <sighs> struggled, fucking hell. Or did they just, move twice? I think it just killed them, to be honest. Yeah. And I don't think they integrated very well with like engineering and the other things that were there, and everyone yeah. just. It was nice when they were out of the city and yeah. go, on, go on, go and play around on that hillside, you weirdos. Yeah. But then as soon as they tried did to integrate it and make it... It did thrive on being out, out there on its own a yeah. bit, really, didn't it? So I did film studies at that campus. It was mm. terrible. It was a terrible course. Really bad. <laughs> what, one, film one good lecturer. Yeah, film, film studies. Yeah. That was really yeah, film, bad. The film, the film library was amazing, though. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I that was the other library. thing. It was like before we were still watching VHSs. So you yeah, couldn't get because their collection was all taped off a of telly. Yeah, some of them like were uh, old video drum. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you had to forward through the adverts and stuff. But um, sit with the headphones on in those with the big TVs in those little boxes. <laughs> so good. Yeah. I wonder. I guess some of that collection went to the other libraries in the. University, but they must have chucked the VHS. They'll have just chucked the VHS as well, they? Yeah. Do you think they'll ever become popular, like vinyl? Well, there's a filter, I think filter on Instagram everyone uses, isn't it? That that look. But I mean, actually, VHS tapes, do you think people all I think some are worth sit something, at home but no, mostly not. Vinyl uh, are popular because they sound great, but VHS looks terrible. So, I really I mean? like how it looked. <laughs> the bit that always gets me is when they used to put a DVD advert on the beginning of a VHS and make video it, and try make and it look, look better. <laughs> yeah, it's like, try and make it, it could look like this, and it's like, well, yeah. why can't how my have video that? look like that now? Because yeah. it's on video. <laughs> and the sound, would be like, the sound would be like panned really like white. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> look at the quality. And you're like, well, why can't it just look like that? It's on video. <laughs> Yeah. Imagine that remit going to the production studio or whatever. So we want to make this advert for a DVD <laughs> that looks really good on VHS. We're just going to pull the wool over everyone's <laughs> eyes. Yeah, yeah, we can do that. So when I was, <laughs> like, yeah, when I was working in Shoreditch, it was like the death of VHS era. And so you'd go down Brick Lane and there'd be people with VHSs laid on a blanket. And then if no one bought any, which no one did... Then they just walk off and leave, leave them. <laughs> <laughs> you remember the kids that like VHSs? People used to talk about how much they were worth, like Robocop's ninety nine pound to buy <laughs> and stuff like that. And you could buy, yeah, them, now, yeah, yeah when they were brand right. new. And they'd have there were video like shelves everywhere, mm. like going to petrol station, and they'd have a rack of video to rent and things like that. There was that. Um, for the cellul- celluloid screens thing last year in town, 
someone opened like a horror, a VHS horror oh. shop at work, yeah. yeah. But you couldn't rent them. It was just like an exhibition. You just went in. It was this guy's um, was it the collection. Old, old films then as well. But he got all the racks in. and yeah. oh. See, I'm out of touch with all this. I don't do Facebook and shit anymore, so I just don't even go to any more exhibitions. Yeah. I seem to know what's going on. That was good. It was, uh, yeah, it's worth a look. Um, Because, yeah, I do do miss uh, video shops. Yeah. (laughs) Because it was an experience, like, you always ended up in there ages picking something. Yeah, even Blockbuster. Yeah. Yeah. Really good. Going in and... And once you... But now it becomes like an argument, because you're, like, sat with your loved ones or whatever flicking through we well, just pick something yeah and you're like but that used to happen Netflix. in the video shop yeah. but once but you'd made that choice you'd watch it you have to watch it yeah. to the end because that's all you'd got same as having <laughs> five channels yeah you'd, if the film was on it doesn't matter how shit the film was you'd watch the film mm. or four channels even but I think yeah. things have become a lot more disposable it's now too much well. choice yeah like oh this is shit turn it off ten minutes into it it's FOMO as well on. because you you see a film that you'd probably watch if you got out from, if it was in a blockbuster, but then you're like, oh, there might be another good uh, film that's better, so you keep scrolling. But the same with albums as well. You used to listen to music from start to finish, mm. and you don't anymore. You just flick, or you've got that Spotify kind of thing. And even dating as well, I suppose that's become disposable on Tinder. Like, well, this is a big yeah. part of how the internet's changed the world. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's definitely sped up that like instant gratification curve. Yeah. Oh good. Yeah. <laughs> Porn of but, so <laughs> but there's always people kicking back, like um Yeah, every generation will do it in a different way, wouldn't they? I know a lot of skate uh filmers will still use like big VHS cameras and yeah. stuff. Because they noticed. want that they want that grain and they don't want to just add a filter. They what was the the real grain and what was the big Sony one that we used to have at uni that you could hire? Yeah, they were good. The top. <laughs> Z1. No, that was a bit later generation. Mike, big handle, skate Z- 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 one, yeah. Because Z- you can like hold them quite low. Yeah. There's a cannon that everyone used of uh, every skate well, with the fish eye on it. That was called yeah. something. Every every single person used it. I can't remember what it was. XC? No, that's a Volvo, isn't it? I don't know. X- I think you're right. I think you. I think you're right. I think it's XC. One, I think it's XC1 yeah. or something XC2 and do you put a full size VHS in the side no, I don't no, know. no there was that, that one. S VHS yeah because yeah. the ones that we had at college was still a full side loading yeah. tape yeah. in the An side I never remember what the leads were called I asked this last week then it was last week the week <laughs> yeah, before yeah 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 Remember when you used to get two VHS players and you had the leads that went between them so you could pirate video not SCAR no they weren't no, SCAR yeah. leads no. there was some yeah, it's you, like a yellow. I never got these S-video? leads because oh, I wanted. I wanted those leads. Those leads, but they were yeah. like, I can I'm, pirate video. If I can get these leads, I can rent a video, <laughs> pirate, it, and sell the videos to kids at school. Yeah. <laughs> but the leads were like, well, what I was ninety nine because I really kid, wanted. I borrowed skate videos from my mates, and I ended up hiring the. VHS camera from pointing it at the TV setting it up on the tripod yeah and always have like a reflection of the red light in the in the screen yeah. is it 411 those videos is that a- um, yeah I think I probably taped one of them and uh, like Toy Machine can, Welcome to Hell Kill like. Yourself yeah ones. Um, CKY videos do you watch uh, and then your mum would like shout video. upstairs yeah. as you were halfway through recording <laughs> 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 Yeah. yeah, all the enjoy ones were amazing, weren't they? Mm. Uh, yeah, all that stuff. That's kind of where my uh, a lot of my musical tastes came from yeah, as well. Yeah, same, same. Other than hip hop, like everything that was on a skate video, I'd like research it. Sometimes find out that my dad had the album it was off, and I was like, "Oh, you had a cool dad." Yeah, oh, his dad's really <laughs> cool. Is he? Yeah, he's really cool. Yeah, I remember watching because we used to watch those. We used to skate, skate growing up the whole time and I was always terrible at skateboarding just crap at it but I remember thinking like these some of these bands some of the punk bands because I was just starting to play guitar I'm like I could play some of this I could be the guy that makes the music for these things Yeah, because I'm like my mates were really good at skateboarding <laughs> and they were like trying to get sponsored and stuff I'm like I'm so terrible at skateboarding but maybe I could yeah film it or like 
that's how I could contribute. Just want to, to be culture. part of it yeah. in some Just way. Yeah, that's exactly. It. <laughs> yeah, some amazingly creative uh, video like editing and filming and stuff on on those skateboarding videos. Yeah, amazing stuff. Well, that's kind of where Spike Jones, Spike Jones yeah. came from. That background, didn't he? And made it to Hollywood and stuff. Just from that lo-fi. Skateboarding has just always been around as like a creative hot house. Yeah. Never really got into it. Never have you seen what they're wearing now? I've been watching it. I have a skateboard, so I never. I've been watching with Oscar now because he, he got a skateboard for his birthday. And they're all wearing like trousers that like stop that far away from your socks. Oh, it's gone back to the Proper 90s. Proper van, yeah. just plain old vans, flat vans, and then like baggy t shirts and hats like that. Mm. So, so, so when I was skateboarding, it was trousers that you cut, you could hardly skate in because they're so big. Yeah, big fat trainers that like loads of padding and stuff. As, Osiris, so, so, yeah, stuff yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah, they're like horrible. DC, they're just massive and gross. Because I started yeah. just before that when it would, it was the same as as, as the trousers have got to now. It right. was like massive, but cut off so they oh, don't right, touch the floor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you could still we didn't skate. really have many skate shoes. We had Puma States or Adidas Gazelles. Right. Um, they get what? Yeah, but these ones I'm like, these just get worn out straight away. Yeah. On the, on the edge. Well, you just have to have shoe goo. There's like a tube of stuff <laughs> that you uh, squeeze yeah. out and like you repair your own shoes. shoes yeah. Just on the edge there. Yeah, because those gazelles would go straight. I think you think you'd have the what well, the shell toe ones. So they'd last a bit longer. Yeah. Yeah, no one had Stan, shelter. What were they? Stan Smiths? No? No, the shelter, like, oh, the EFC ones. There must have been a problem Superstars. skating. With, no one skated in shelter. Oh, they were cool. Superstars, I think. They probably weren't cool at the time. No, is it? <laughs> is it? So you know what we talk about. You I know, know the ones, yeah, shelters. Yeah. Because I got loads of shit in school for wearing Puma States and Adidas Gazelles, and then, like, a few years later, when Oasis and Glow were wearing them, everyone <laughs> was wearing them. JK used to wear them as well, didn't he? Jamiroquai. He was a skater. Was he? Yeah. Yeah, because I used to try and rock the gazelles as well. I think he was Rad in um, Rad Magazine, Ollie and off a bus <laughs> yeah. stop or something. Uh, <laughs> yeah. okay. Before he was singing, yeah. Yeah, it's really cool. <laughs> um, Can I forget Denise all this Van <laughs> Yeah, that's when I spent I lived, in. I lived near um, the Big Breakfast House when we were in London, actually. Oh, okay. <laughs> Going back to when I was in London. Did I? Did I dream this, or did somebody tell me that they'd bring in the big breakfast back for a week or something? Oh, they're doing. Right. Uh, they're doing the what special. with Chris Evans and? No, no, I don't. Who's the other one? Because no, they did it with TFI, didn't they? So yeah, maybe I think they're going to bring it back soon. I wonder if they're going back to that in house uh, in Hackney. Then. Two lock keepers' cottages. I yeah, it was called. Yeah, Old Ford Lock. Old Ford Lock, London. <laughs> E three two N N or something like yeah. that. Yeah, when we moved into the things to yeah. When we moved into the flat, I was looking at the map and I was like, "Old Ford Lock, Lock Keepers Cottages." <laughs> <laughs> and then just jumped on a bike and went down and like, "That's the big breakfast house." So cool. This is where Johnny Vaughan used to like snort his cocaine. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> Six test, in the morning. Let's go. <laughs> test out Sinclair C fives and stuff next to we, the lock. We listen to Radio X. And uh, he's got a show on and it's he? terrible. He's just not good. He's, had, he's, he's still going. He talks and talks and talks, but it's just like, what? He must about? have snorted his way through some raw. Sounds like that. Right <laughs> he's got loads of sidekicks as well. It's just like, not good. Oh, we've, entourage. I, we, Imagine we, being in Johnny Vaughan's entourage. <laughs> That's your job. Wild. Did, 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 there's an Instagram account that it's not good anymore, but he used to post pictures from that era of celebrities and put these am- amazing long captions. Did you ever follow Oh, it? no. It, 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 um, the, it, the name of it was the name of one oh, of the celebrities. Paul. Paul. Dan. 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 Yeah, Dan. yeah, yeah. Dan and... From yeah, and Hollywood. Yeah, really. Yeah. That yeah, was yeah. one of the best. Excellent account. account. Yeah, so really good. good. I think it dropped off because it, it got big. But I uh, think he does the odd poster. Amazing. Lots Literally, of- just gold. Yeah, yeah, like nostalgic, like slagging people off and saying <laughs> it, how many drugs they used to do. Yeah, and, you know, really. Yeah. F- yeah. It but it's one of them where it has the the real celebrities will comment on the yeah. post, like it's but, got yeah. such a following. Yeah, he was weird, wasn't he? Didn't he try and have like a? I I, I can't remember who it was. was he had he a just... celebrity. Th- it was in Hollyoaks. Oh right. And then he was like a minor celebrity, and then he was just known for that whole China wide kind of scene, weren't he? In London. 
And then I think, did he try and have a pop career or something? And then he just Probably. nosedived. Something he was on Celebrity Big well. Brother or something. He was on Celebrity Big Brother. Celebrities have kind of dropped off as well, haven't they? And they're not allowed to leave the house, are they? No, I mean, like, <laughs> the past ten years, celebrities, celebrities were, like, the thing yeah. that everyone was talking about all the time. And it seems to we seem to have these uber celebrities forced on us now from America, though, don't we? Mm. Like, it's a little bit different. Or you just think they're not a celebrity. Or there's that many of them. I mean, it's been diluted. Diluted, yeah. Because there's, there's, yeah. That, many of them because there's that many... Because there used to be... That was the era... People used to be famous for being good at something. And then there was an era of people well, wanting yeah. to be famous for being famous, which was that it yeah. era you're on about. Big and brother, then, so. yeah, and now we've realised that that was a bit of a scam. And like, it's just like, you just fucking... Yeah, but were they, good? Are you? Were were they good at something, though? Or was that just like... I think they used to be Rose like Tinted. Phil Collins. You won't look at him and try and make him a celebrity, would you? But he's <laughs> fucking one of the best musicians ever. Yeah, but the, look at his head. I watched Buster been... the other day and I'm like, how the fuck did he? He would not get famous nowadays. It'd well, just be. I don't know because like um, Ed Sheeran's fame is <laughs> yeah. pretty baffling to me. Yeah. I remember seeing him at the forum and he was fucking amazing. I had this conversation <laughs> with my sister. She was there. Was yeah, like, it's like what the fuck. <laughs> Next thing you're out in the street singing with that little guitar. I was like, this is the best gig ever. Second best gig. The best one was Monotonics at the fucking hallway. Oh yeah, I was in that they one. Just yeah. fucking smashed the place up and <laughs> lifted him all crowd. Yeah, oh, Harley had some kick great. drum on fucking bar. It was like, <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, tipping it's... bin out on everyone and uh, <laughs> loved is, them. Is the internet a a, uh, a, a rap group, a hip hop rap group? Yeah, yeah, it's a good. Group. I'm sure they played at the Harley. No, That's Handsome the, Boy Modeling School. I'm not getting really confused. Handsome Boy Modeling School. I just remember the Harley having some absolutely wicked kids. They've had kids. some really good yeah, kids. Some is it Handsome Boy Modeling through. School? That is a rap, I don't know if they would have group. played. It was the internet. I can't remember. They One were of more of a two. collective of different people that collaborated with them. But um, That's amazing. So I remember the my, internet. Did you play there? Yeah, loads of times at the Harley. My friend... Just My friend <laughs> drinking did, heavily at did the time. some DJ sets there before, and and it was, it was probably the internet before them, and it did this set, and uh, and then he stopped stopped playing his playlist or whatever, and then the, the Harley's playlist came on, and, and we sat there for a few of the songs, we're like this is way better than what you just played. He's like, yeah, <laughs> it's just wicked. They had this like amazing playlist. On. Oh, they brought their own playlist. It's just a playlist they played every night. I guess yeah, yeah. it was just like, yeah, I'm, I'm probably not going to do this again. It's just pretty good. <laughs> These amazing songs. Yeah, it was a great place as well, the Harley, wasn't it? Mm. Man, life music is, oh, this is the most depressing podcast ever. <laughs> <laughs> the Harley's Remember reopened. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, a weird time for music industry, especially, it's isn't crazy. it? Crazy. I can't believe that they're like bailing out loads of other shit. Have you seen today that Cineworld's closing? Yeah. Mm. yeah. It's like, what the fuck? But you'll bail out fucking all these other wankers. Grouse hunting, yeah. Yeah, and let people grouse them and not wear masks in chauffeur-driven cars, but you're going to let... I mean, it's... All the fucking cinemas shut. It's to expected, isn't it? So is the revolution. <laughs> Either rich. <laughs> Heads on sticks, that's all I can say. Yeah, I guess... Um, the arts is just going to be it. Screwed, isn't it? It's just, It'll come back. It just has to find a way of evolving, I guess. I mean, it probably already has. Um, people have found little ways to um, tweak what they do and keep it going a, in, a, in a way. That's but, what the industry's good at. I suppose musicians, it's, it's really hard because they'd already strangled it with not giving them record deals and gigs being the only way that bands could make money mm. and not even gigs because the venues were taking a lot of the merch being the main yeah but then like Spotify rinsing them fucking so like now they can't even gig it's like what the fuck yeah. there's going to be a proper because a lot of dry money, spell a lot of work music. that I do is connected with music still yeah uh, gig posters and um Album covers and I know you do gig posters because I've got designs. In my office, I've got my computer, uh, a print from IKEA, and I've got a, a Thomas Newell. Original. Oh, nice! A what a yellow what uh, print's that? It's uh, it's the a Wu Tang. Um, oh right, yeah. Tramlines from yellow. when they cancelled the show. <laughs> yeah, 
<laughs> and I'd already Is that finished the, one? the poster. Yeah. I met them backstage. Or is that another year? No, they never came here. Wu Tang Clan. Oh no, I'm thinking. Was it one enemy. of the Wu Tang? Yeah. No, it was Public Enemy. Oh yeah, yeah. I, was I think they. Used... <laughs> high. Sorry. Um, Terry Lay probably. They were because I know somebody went and fetched them some weed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was the year before. But I arranged the uh, tramlines gig poster show two year two or three years in a running uh, where we invited we got um, a group of artists to pick a band from the headline from the bill yeah and um, do a poster for it as if it was a one-off gig and then we put the posters up in Millennium Gallery so maybe that's where you got oh, the yeah. Wu Tang no you sent it to me because you sent me a really nice note oh so after the after that show then yeah it was like a year ago I think. yeah Oh, it must have been like because it was like it was like a yellow. You'd found the yellow one because I was like, I love the. I said, I, 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 yeah, I want the white one, and he was like, I've I've got they've all sold out, but I found a yellow one. I'm like even better because I prefer that one. Even. Yeah, because they cancelled so last minute that I still exhibited oh. the the uh, print. Were they going to play with the guy with the kit uh, ODB sub? Was that? I don't know if they got him in at yeah. that point. Young Before. dirty bastard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he he plays with them now. Yeah. He just sounds exactly he's like He's just him. a carbon copy he's of his amazing. dad, which is amazing. kind of... If he's happy to do that, yeah. I don't know if I'd <laughs> be... Uh, all right with it. Yeah, if if that fulfills what he wants to do. Yeah, but just, imagine going... Because I watched the documentary about them, but they struggled, didn't they? They were broke for a long... Well, apart from selling crack and stuff like that. Yeah, like Cappadonna was a taxi driver. Yeah, and yeah. <laughs> they worked and they worked at the place on Staten Island and all that kind of shit. And, they, they, and then they made it, but he's just slipped straight into like, woohoo, money. Oof, and that so, like, yeah. licensing money is just must be millions of a year they must get. Merch. You're wearing a Wu Tang t shirt now, aren't you? <laughs> I hope it's an original. Is it? no, it's but crap. weird position for him to be like reciting his dad's Very lyrics strange. about cheating on his mum. I, oh, right. <laughs> I saw him on uh, NPR, you know, NPR uh, Tiny Desk on YouTube. Tiny mm. Desk. Best, best. Yeah, that's a good one, actually. Uh, they, they, they played on that and they're all pretty chill. And then it came to his verse and he like jumps up on the desk and he's like going for it like this. Yeah. It's just bizarre. <laughs> Because he's got the most energy out of them, all of them yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This young, point, they're all gravy. Yeah, he's not smoking enough crack or weed yet. Yeah. So. Oh, he was in the best, in the best ever. So, have you got any shows or bits and bobs coming up, or anything that you're working on that's interesting? Um, I want to exhibit uh, some stuff next year, early next year, possibly. Uh, depending on what the situation is about exhibiting stuff at that point but yeah because uh, I've been doing a drawing every single day this year onto um, calendar pages I've got this like tear off calendar oh uh, okay what and, like um, the, where it has a little quote at the bottom it's uh, from Taiwan my friend sent it from Taiwan so it's got all these sure. like um, a friend of Sean's Kelly oh uh, um, okay yeah and uh yeah, it's a really nicely designed calendar because I kind of put it up and then tore the 1st of January's page off and was just about to put it in the bin. I was like, oh, I might do a drawing on that. And then it's oh, like nice, escalated yeah. to like, shit, I'm doing this all year, aren't I? I've got 365. <laughs> yeah. Months. What are we on now? You'll actually know how many you've got, won't we? But do you know not uh, got the numbers? Oh, I don't know how many, but uh, most of them done at this about point. 300. Yeah. It must but, be. Where are we? October... November, Four, December. Fifth. Yeah, so it's, it's got to be 300, hasn't it? Yeah. But surely you can exhibit outside somewhere. Like you could figure out a way of making it yeah. laminate more. <laughs> um, Maybe yeah, I'll should figure do out some, a way. Uh, gig posters of gigs that didn't happen. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, yeah, I've got, I've finished a couple of gig posters actually that the bands are going to maybe use for next year's tours but I think they're they're kind of putting out shows and tours now that might not even happen next year I don't, I don't know they're just um, because I'll take it somehow aren't they do yeah. you know your distinct style the black and white thing where did mm. that actually come from then? 
Uh, I was thinking about this today because... Uh, because I asked you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, because I saw some old drawings. Some of the drawings I did at Salter Lane before I was told I wasn't allowed to draw yeah. were done with like biro and crosshatching. I was, oh, okay. I was well into... Because um, I, I, I guess I like to make things difficult for myself as well. Because yeah. the, these calendar pages are like rubbish paper and some of the some of the pages have designs on that you have to like incorporate. So I like giving myself problems, I suppose. And working with biros, it was always, it's cheap biros and you could be halfway through a drawing and it'd like blob and you'd have to like work that blob into the design. And Yeah. But um, I did enjoy the uh, range of like weights you could get on a biro. I think it's something you don't get from anything else really. It's yeah. sort of like pencil, but better and worse in different ways because I know I'm quite obsessive about pens and unless somebody else is into pens yeah and I've talked to Bun quite a bit about pens as well but like I do like Bic the heavy Bic not the fine not the yellow ones yeah the clear ones the heavy is it not? oh yeah yeah they're quite nice to draw with Got yeah a nice roll that's what I them. always tried to have one laying around but there's a couple of pen tells that I like that are kind of yeah nice flowing ones and have you tried the Muji pens as well? The Maybe. liquid rollers that they do. Oh, yeah. I've got some, I'll let you have one. Um, <laughs> but yeah. Um, but this is stuff that I refine. Road trim drawing with. pens as well. You yeah, that's what I got onto the ink ones. when I worked at the art shop. Right. And I think I kind of looked up what comic artists were using yeah. for the first time. I was like, actually. Because I used to just use whatever was lying around. Because I... I Got into the rotary pens. I did um, my work experience was at uh, what are they called civil engineering office, and it was back in the days where you got a big piece of you know like the clear acetate. Oh yeah. You had yeah. to draw with a pen, and you've got the set square and the thing. Yeah. And I'm just so much of drawing these pipelines, and like you'd have a 0 0.5 for some bits and a yeah. 0 0.1 for other bits. Because they they were pitched as like architectural. Yeah, they're architects' pens. pens. Like, Fucking loved them, and I've, yeah. about two, three years ago, I've trapped myself to one. But I've not really had the yeah. chance to draw, or had the paper that's suitable to draw on. Because a lot of stuff I do is on like, um, you know, like lining paper. Yeah, so it's quite rough. But those pens just don't suit. It's me. got no chance. Yeah, pen you, you got to have really... the Bristol board. Right. Okay. Um, which is all stuff that I figured out through the art shop and right. Uh, Googling what, because uh, people like Robert Crumb, he, he used rotaring, I think. Okay. Oh no, maybe he was like dip pen. Oh. I never, uh, I've never made the jump to dip pen, but still a lot of people swear by that. I feel that and the could meditative be a massive fuck up with a dip pen though, like as that's in, what I'm always scared of. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or moving it with your hand and it just being like, oh, yeah. Oh, 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 that. And the hassle of like moving your hand over there to dip it and yeah, but apparently you do get a long time with who, a tiny bit of ink. Who was the guy who did the really? Is it Richard Scarry or something? Scarry, Scarry. Oh, who did the dip pen where the, you just let the blobs? All on the it. messy stuff. And like did, it, did Sted, it, Ralph Steadman. Ralph Steadman, that's the guy I think. He did the fear and loathing stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Hunter S. Thompson. Stuff, yeah. yeah. So he, he wanted the mess. Yeah. Then, yeah. But if you don't never, want that, then... Could never uh, pull that off. <laughs> um, like planned mess. But yeah, I think moving away from Byros was because I was doing gig posters and like flyers for DJing sets and stuff. And I wasn't even scanning stuff in at that point. It was photocopying. Right. And so it was like... I'm doing these cross-hatched, shaded levels of grey drawings and putting them through a photocopier and it's coming out... Black and white. Just a mess. So slowly it just lost all the in-between. Did you have and, a um, darker, 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 darker and try... I was mucking around with that, yeah, yeah, but then... This is something that Nick was talking about. Eventually well. it just became black and white, just contrast. Right. Cool. And I, I was seeing stuff like Charles Burns... Um, uh, draw really shiny hair like quips and stuff and uh, kind of just really into that stark black and white so just 
lost all the grey out of it. Yeah. <laughs> That's mad. <laughs> Just because of photocopiers. Just so it would be photocopiable, yeah. Which is, yeah, that's a really cool little... And then, um, uh, even now, like, I don't... Uh, I just, like, scan something in, tweak it a tiny bit on Photoshop, but... Um, Try and do as least as possible on Photoshop. Yeah. Try and get as perfect as you can, so yeah. you don't have to do as much Yeah. dog shit at the end. Yeah, I give, my, give myself all these rules that no one else cares about. Yeah, uh, it's weird that when it's, I'm saying if I ever draw, I used to set like boundaries in my head and can't go over lines and you, you've got to... Yeah. It's like a weird <laughs> zone that you go into, isn't it? Zone mm. of rules and... Yeah. It's called OCD. <laughs> <laughs> you've Possibly. got OCD. Yeah. I've got this crazy idea that someone somewhere, probably no one will, but even if someone notices some tiny thing and like, oh, he's, he's done that. I can't believe he's done that. And <laughs> right, it would have yeah. been so much easier to right, yeah. just cut that corner. But um, yeah, I'm just I'm just doing these stupid things just for that one person in the future <laughs> who might see that and think, what an idiot. <laughs> do you know yeah, what you I do? Totally when you do get into a zone is it like almost meditative for you though when you're drawing when yeah you, when you're filling in and yeah I think that's the only reason that I still do it really I yeah mean, other than you can't be thinking about what you're actually doing now you've been doing it that long uh, well the sketch process and like putting something together uh, beforehand because by the time I get onto I work on a light box yeah with uh, stuff like rotary and I use like Posca pens and by that point there's like a photocopy of a photocopy of a photocopy underneath uh, of like a sketch and then I'm working on top with a really clean piece of paper to do the final ink All right. Uh, but by that point I'm just kind of going through the motions and the drawing's been worked out underneath so it's like an overhead project, but like underneath, sort of thing. Uh, yes, yeah, piece of glass built into my desk, and then there's just a lamp underneath. All right, so, so you're going over something that's just, already there. It's tracing. Tracing, yeah, tracing. just tracing. yeah, lit, so yeah. it's easier. Mm. Um, Which is old but yeah, it well. is yeah, completely meditative by that point, um, and a lot of easier ways to do it. But well, yeah, because you just um, kind of. I enjoy it's really weird because a lot of people would have moved on to iPads or yeah. using Wake other stuff pens. or yeah, just yeah. scan it in. Well, this it, is always the slight push. temptation. and People say, why don't you do this? But the, I could just never bring myself to find But it. I like that purity and the craft of what you're doing as well. And you, when yeah. you look at your original pieces that you've done and you've it's like, oh, yeah. Ooh. Yeah. But it's probably not something I'd come up to you while you're there and other friends are around and stuff and be like, oh, I really, I'd just be like, yeah, it's nice that time, you know, just <laughs> carry on. But yeah. I do really like looking at your work. Yeah, it is about having that original ink drawing yeah. that you might show someone at some point. But Yeah. Because um, I like, um, to go back to Neil as well, Bun, he's a big fan of the pen, but I know he's gone... He's doing a bit of iPad stuff, isn't he? He, but he, he loves the iPad. Yeah. Just he can the, make it work for himself. For the calligraphy, it's like... I think I might... Fucking hell. If I did put the time in, I might find a way yeah. to make it work in a way for me. I don't know, but... Um, you should probably sit down just here, never. to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> and go, oh, look, I'm doing this. Oh, <laughs> look, I'm doing this. And you'd be like, fucking hell, why have you never sat down before? And actually... Yeah. Bumped heads... Yeah. But it, it is the process of working in the meditative way. It's like, I don't even like it sometimes. It's like I love it and hate it. And I'm, on, I'm only looking to the point where it's finished. I'm, that That's my goal of like, I can't wait for this my, to be finished. Some of what I did when I was drawing, when I used to draw quite a bit, was, as you say, came from being in an altered state. Mm. So it'd be like, after nights out clubbing or whatever, I'd pick up a pen and pad and I'd just be in there. Yeah. Is that something that you did yeah, yourself? Yeah, I think that's... Um, and it's just gone from there. Yeah. I think getting... 
Developing, yeah, <laughs> developing my style as a kid and like teenager and stuff. Yeah, um, was all about that. And then and now working sober is like, uh, I guess you've just still got that in your head. What what you were able to figure out then? Yeah, and you just call call back on it a bit. Yeah, but you kind of don't need to need to do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's really weird. <laughs> Yeah, I, mean, I, I kind of know what is. We could talk forever. Yeah. <laughs> Stop asking questions. Sorry. <laughs> like an hour and a half. Need to get to the crux of it though. You know what's in his mind. No one's listening anymore. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks so much for watching. Oh, probably, I mean, we're only doing yeah. ten episodes. Yeah. I wish we could get you on again, but. Um, we might do Sorry, that. I didn't realize how long we'd been doing. I think we've been on for ages. Have we? Thanks for yeah. rambling okay. on. <laughs> Thanks so much yeah. for watching. Yeah, cheers too. for having me. Uh, yeah, where can we find you on the internet? Uh, mostly Instagram mm-hmm. at Tom J. Noor. At Tom J. Um, well, yeah. it'll be on the screen at the start of the episode. Cool. But yeah, that was awesome. Thanks so much. Uh, so we'll be back next week with hopefully someone from. I think it will be the Lion Brothers mm. twins. Cross. We're going to have to find another chair. And the mic. Uh, yeah, let us know what the sounds like because we we uh, stumbled upon a new way of doing sound last Without week. The mics it was an accidental. Uh, oh, this, yeah, yeah, yeah it works out all right. Mm. It's better than wearing headphones. More comfortable, anyway. Cheers. Thank Bye. you. See you.